Somebody say, the word is going to reach me today. Say, wherever I am, the word is going to reach me today. Mark 9, we'll get to the verse shortly. Contextually, Yahshua came to the disciples who were disputing with scribes, and a crowd had formed around them. Yeshua asked what was being discussed, and a father replied. He says the disciples couldn't cast out a mute spirit that was convulsing his son. The master says, oh, faithless generation, say he's talking to everybody. He says, oh, faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? Bring him to me. Yeshua asks, how long has this been happening to him? The father replied, from childhood. He's been thrown into both fire and water to be destroyed. Mm. But if you can do anything. If you can do anything, but you got to realize the tone that he's speaking in, because there's doubt in his tone. There's doubt in his tone. He says, if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Mark chapter 9, verse 23 and 24 reads as follows. Jesus said to him, if you can believe. All things are possible to him who believes. Immediately, the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. Somebody say the word is going to reach me today. Tell somebody the word is going to reach me today. Have your seats. Watch this. Belief is a conduit whereby possible is made manifest. Belief is a conduit whereby possible is made manifest. This is key. All things are possible. Not to be achieved by us, but to be realized from God. I don't know if y'all got it. Let me say it one more time. I say all things are possible not to be achieved by us, but to be received from God. And a lot of times what's happening is we're saying my faith is going to cause it to work and we're not realizing the process. My belief is going to cause this to work. But it is not what we achieve in and of ourselves because what we have has been given. See, what we have has been given. Okay. All things are possible not to be achieved by us, but to be realized from God. Say, what I'm believing God for I'm going to realize from him. And a lot of times we're faulting ourselves because we don't realize that when it's going to work, say, it's going to work. I need somebody that's going to step out on belief today. Say, it's going to work. But I got to realize it from God. I got to release I got to realize it from Yahweh. Here's the thing, if can be a hitch in our belief. The father said, "If you can do anything." The tone in the text is there's doubt attached to his statement. If you can do anything. Watch this. Yeshua says, "If you can believe." You got to catch the tone in which he's replying to him say, "Like if you can believe, then this would actually work." If you could do, because we come to God, God, if you could do anything, and he's like, if you could believe. Not if you believe that your faith 
is going to do it. It's your faith in me to do it through your faith. It's different. It's not just your faith that's doing it. It's your belief in me to do it through your belief. And we've been skipping that part of the process because we're saying that I'm going to activate my faith and I'm going to activate my belief. But my belief has got to reach God so that God can reach my belief and then it's going to work out for me. So my belief is not in me. Watch this. It's not my belief in my faith. Boy, this is going to mess some people up. It's not my belief in my belief. Because some of us, get, you understand where I'm going, some of us get wrapped up in it. Oh, I got the gift of faith. Understand, watch this. The gift of faith is given to you. So if it's going to work, it's going to work through you, not because of you. Okay, it's going to work through you because of Yahweh. So I know this might sound weird to some people. Don't let your faith, don't start worshiping your faith. Don't worship your provision. Worship your provider. Don't celebrate your provision Celebrate your provider. Do you see where I'm going? And so sometimes we celebrate our faith without celebrating he who gave us the faith. And sometimes we try to go in belief, go in faith. <laughs> we try to go in belief without believing in him. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So I must have belief that he's going to do it through my belief. It's not just my belief by itself. Because if it becomes my belief by itself, then I become self-sufficient. If, 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 if I, does this make sense to anybody? If I think it's my belief by itself, then my belief becomes my provider. Instead of my provider becoming through my belief. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. If could be a hitch and I believe, the Father said, if you could do anything, Yeshua says, if you can't believe. If you can believe I can do anything, then anything is possible. Yes. Not if you believe your belief. Okay. To be honest, sometimes, more times than we want to give credence to, the belief needed is not the belief possessed. There are issues that make us realize there's a need and or room for improvement. You need to hang on to that because it's going to come back later. I said there are issues that make us realize there's need and or room for improvement. Hmm. Listen close. A profession of belief isn't voided by an admission of unbelief. Because it would seem like this statement was almost contradicting itself. How can you say in one instance, Lord, I believe, but in the same setting, at the same time, say, Lord, help my unbelief. And it seems like there's a conflict, but I don't think enough of us are really honest about our belief because there's levels to this. And so he's saying, Lord, I believe, but I need help. My belief needs help. And see what we got to say. I don't want to get ahead of myself, but watch this. I'm not even coming to you about myself. God help me. He didn't come to Yeshua for himself. The father wasn't looking to solve an issue that he had. He was looking to solve an issue his son had. 
But in seeking what his son needed, he found what he was lacking. God help my soul. I said in seeking. Sometimes anybody ever went in a prayer for somebody and then you had to turn around and say, it's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord. Yes, sir. Okay. I don't want to get too excited. But a profession of belief is avoided by an admission of unbelief sometimes. It's not that we don't believe that God is. That ain't the issue. I don't believe the people of faith, because I'm talking to believers right now, I don't believe that the people of faith have an issue with believing that God is. Because he who comes to God, must first believe that he is. Here's the other part. And. But that's the. Say that's the other part. So there's telling you there's two separate. God help my soul. I know it's a simple verse. But it's two processes. It's a two step process. He who comes to God must first. So that tells you let's get the first thing first. I need to first believe God. So I believe God. That's why I came to him. The father believed God. That's why he came to him. I believe that you are. I'm about to find out you're the rewarder of them. <laughs> Say rewards are coming to me. Because I'm seeking him. <laughs> Say rewards are coming to me. I need somebody to embrace it. Say rewards are coming to my house. Because I'm seeking him. He is the rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Watch this. Not all the, not, it's not about what he can do. It's about who he is. Because before you want what he has, you must first want who he, God help me. You must first want who he is. He who comes to God must first believe. So before the rewards, my belief need to, before my, before my rewards come, I need to get my belief right. Now, I hope I'm making sense to somebody. <laughs> to be honest, sometimes we struggle when we haven't seen certain deliverances we desire. Anybody believe in God? But you're still looking for some deliverances. <laughs> I need the church to be honest. I'm tired of church that act like everything is all right and the Lord is going to do it in the next two hours, two days. There's some stuff that you've been praying for for two decades and you're still waiting on God. Okay, I know we're in a microwave society nowadays, but God still moves according to due season. And due season is determined by him and him alone. Say, we cannot determine due season. He says, in due season, you will reap if you faint not. And sometimes what we do is we start to start working our own harvest. We mad at GMO infecting our food when we do the same thing in faith. You mad at anybody getting mad at they putting all this stuff? It's like, I just wanted broccoli. Why do when I look at for the ingredients of broccoli, it's, it's 10 ingredients. It should be broccoli. <laughs> I, you know what I'm saying? I, when I go to pick up broccoli, I should go, broccoli. It shouldn't even, it shouldn't even have ingredients. It should just have a description. You know, because some vegetables like, like, Parsley and cilantro can look similar if you don't know the difference, right? So I need a description so I know that what I'm, I'm picking up. But I shouldn't have to look at it and be like, okay, well, what come with this parsley? What come with this cilantro? What come with this broccoli? Broccoli. But we see these things, they have all these other ingredients, and half of them you can't even pronounce. But we get mad at that. We say, why can't they just give us... Broccoli, why can't they just give us what we're looking for? And God be like, well, why can't you just give me what, you know what? <laughs> Wait a minute. So what do you mean by we try to work our own harvest, we try to determine our own seasons? 
Who told you it was your season? Who, 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 who told you that it was going to be the latter rain in this season? Oh, the latter rain is coming. Look, you don't get to determine the seasons. That's Yahweh's doing. He says, if you, uh, if you act, if you conduct yourselves according to my ways, then I will cause for the latter rain, the former rain, and the latter rain to come. What does the text say? In their seasons. And so we struggle with things because we haven't seen deliverances we desire. So what we start doing, instead of just working in the field that he told us to work in, though it's not producing what we think it should produce. Abraham was working the same field for nine years. Year 10 came around and he said, you know what I'm going to do? I got some ingredients. See, y'all thought I was just talking. Uh, See, so he's talking about Abraham. He ain't talking about me. Because, you know, when you, people take it personally, they be like, that's how, you too much in my business. I don't know your business. I told y'all, I ain't deep like that. I'm talking about what I'm talking about. So I ain't talking about you. No, I'm talking about Abram. <laughs> and so he, he's been working the same field, right? Because watch this, hit me by the spirit, he's been sowing in a field that's not producing. <sighs> I've been sowing for nine years. And how I've been sowing isn't working, so let me introduce an ingredient that will accelerate my growth. <laughs> introduce Hagar. So I'm going to raise hell. I mean Hagar. <laughs> and Hagar could have been a good help if I would have left her where she belonged. We demonize Hagar because the way Hagar started acting when you misplaced her. Hagar was displaced twice. So she was displaced first by Sarai. Sarai said, instead of being here in my house, here be with my husband. You got to be careful what you bring in your bedroom. Anywho. And so now he works a different field. And now this field produces. And so when you see production, we're like, oh, look how God moved. And I told you many times just because he moves doesn't mean that he's pleased. Because watch this, principles work with or without relationship. And so Ishmael was produced. Fast forward, but when he tried to offer Ishmael to God, God act like Ishmael didn't even exist. Huh? Cannot Ishmael live before you? No, nah, because I didn't ask for him. You was trying to feed me GMO, and I won't eat it. When he asked for that sacrifice, he doesn't say, bring me your other son. He says, give me your only son. I don't even recognize that. Wow. You want to give your, God help me, I'm trying to get back to the text. You're trying to give your inheritance to a harvest that doesn't belong to you. And if you hear me, I'm actually talking about what's happening. Okay. Okay. Let me get back on task here. 
But did you hear what I'm saying? We struggle, and when we struggle, we start getting creative. And better than creative, what starts happening is we develop vain imagination. So we start imagining maybe it'll work. Sometimes the belief needed isn't the belief possessed. Follow me here. Understand the father's petition. I'm talking about the father of the son who's having the issues. The father's petition to the disciples left him disappointed because he went to the disciples first and the disciples couldn't do it. I'm going to get somewhere with that in a minute. He went to the disciples and the disciples couldn't do it. And sometimes, watch this, we go to other believers and say, Pray for, I've seen you get a prayer through so many times before. Pray for me. And then when the pray, the prayer doesn't come through, what happens? We don't look at ourselves. We say, hey, you couldn't get a prayer through anyway. <laughs> you came to me. I can, watch this. I should be praying with you. Unless you are incapacitated or unreachable, I should be praying with you. Okay. We should, be, we should have an agreement in faith, not a dependency. Okay. Are you hearing what I'm saying? <laughs> They left him disappointed. The text reveals his own doubt. The father's own doubt exposes a deficit in his belief. His own doubt exposes a deficit in his belief. Whether the doubt preexisted the issue or whether the issue spawned the doubt, he still exposes a deficit in his belief. Because remember, his assertion his confession, his profession is that, Lord, I believe. Help. Also, we see his deficit is influenced by relationship. I don't know if I'm going to get there. I say sometimes we realize that our deficit is really influenced or highlighted. By relationship. Because not only was it influenced, it was highlighted. By relationship. Because again, it's not the father's issue. Say it's not the father's issue. Or is it? It's not the father's issue. Because when the father comes to the disciple, he doesn't come for himself. He comes for his relationship. I hope you hear me. I say he didn't come for himself. He comes for what he's connected to. He comes for what he's connected to. He says, I have this child. I have this relationship. And my relationship needs help. My relationship needs help. It's a child's issue. Say it's somebody else's issue. It's not me. This is his mentality at first. It's not my. He doesn't see his own issue because he's looking at somebody else's issue. And that's going to preach better than. I say, I say he's not looking at his own issue because he's looking at somebody else's issue. He's looking, he's focusing, and rightfully so, he's focusing on his son's issue. But then he starts focusing on somebody else's issue. He starts focusing on, watch this, the disciples' issue. Because y'all can't do it. Pastor can't do it. Apostle couldn't do it. Prophet couldn't do it. So they ain't, y'all know how we get. They ain't who they say they are. As if they are your provider. Let me stand here flat footed and look everybody in their eyeballs. I am not your provider. 
Y'all know better, but I just want to make sure. I told you the peak, the pinnacle of my powers, conduit, usher. That's the pinnacle of my powers. Conduit, usher. No matter how anointing I get, no matter how many accelerated, all this wonderful stuff we hear about, right? Ascension gifts. My ascension gift is going to be a conduit and an usher. At my best. Absolute best. God ordained best. Conduit, usher. So we see his, the, his deficit is influence and Truth be told, highlighted by relationship is his child's issue, or is it? Make no mistake, every relationship is an access point for destruction, deficit, and development. Every relationship, mm hmm, say all of them. You have a God ordained marriage. Your spouse is an access point. You are in the place where God sent you to. And you are in association with the people God told you to be associated with. Everybody that you are associated with. Watch this. Even in right relationships. Watch this. Say right, even right relationships are access points. God gave Adam Eve. Eve was the access point. I'm not blaming Eve. I'm saying she was the access point. Y'all know me. I want to get on Adam. Dude, what's, what's... That's what's wrong with the church now. Let me come back over here because I don't want to get on the tent. I don't want to... I don't want to be all... Whew. I don't want to be overly tangential, man. I'm just... Uh. Let me, let me do this preaching thing. And this is an issue with the church now. We want to blame the women, and the women are the ones building it. Never mind. We want to blame her when we're the problem. I'm in, I'm in vain. I'm in the vain. We want to look at somebody else. It's the disciples' issue. It's my son's issue. It's not my issue. Thank you, Holy Ghost. It, it's, it's, not, it's not my issue. It's this woman you gave me, God help. I'm not to be blamed. Watch this. If you would not have given this to me, I wouldn't have this issue. God help me. If you wouldn't have given this to me, I wouldn't have had this issue. I gave it to you for your good. Say, everything God has ever given to me is for my good. That means the sickness, too. Okay. You act like God didn't send Job his sickness. Okay. Well, we don't we don't like that version. We want the we want the you gonna get blessings on 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 blessings. Blessings on 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 blessings. No problems, just blessings. No problems, just blessings. No problem, just blessings. <laughs> but every relationship is an access point for destruction, deficit, or development. Additionally, his destitution creates a lesson for the disciples. I just gave you three things that this one issue is about. God help me. Let me do it again. I said his own doubt exposes a deficit in his belief. His deficit is influenced by relationship. And his destitution it creates a lesson for the disciples. My issues 
is about to help somebody believe. God help my. I said, okay, let me come back over here. I got too excited. My issue is about to help somebody else. What I'm going through, what I'm struggling with is about to bless somebody else. Okay. What I'm struggling with, if I just be honest about, it's about to help somebody else. But we like to act like nothing's going on because we, we you know what I'm saying, all our, our, our belief is so big and there's nothing wrong with my faith and I believe God for everything. You ain't even seen everything. <laughs> Peter believed he was about that life. He proved that he was about that life when a fisherman took a shank out to a soldier. Y'all ain't read that story? When the soldier stepped up, he was like, I wish you would. You, you better be glad I miss, because Jesus' last miracle would have been reattaching your head. So he went for the head. Real quick, y'all remember that, y'all remember that story in Avengers? When old boy had the, uh, you know what I'm saying, when he put the, 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 the axe in his, in, his, in his shoulder, and he said, you should have went for the head. Peter went for the head. He got his end. Yeshua had to heal the man, and then that same man was probably smacking him two minutes later. So Peter was about that life in front of the soldiers. But then when the servant girl came, and she said, hey, don't you run with Jesus, Dale? Nah, shawty. I don't even know dude like that. Yeah. That ain't, that ain't, that ain't. Y'all ain't. Y'all ain't read that version? Y'all ain't see that? That's not the King James version. That's the Joel Pope version. Downloadable. Huh? All right. Nah, you know? Hey, nah, shawty. I don't know dude like that. Straight denial. The same person he was ready to die for. In a different situation with something that, with an unexpected issue, now he's ready to deny. The same person he was ready to die for in an unexpected issue, what was unexpected, he didn't expect the servant girl to ask him. Because sometimes questions feel like attack. That's a whole nother thing. Do you know him, huh? We're a little bit too close to that cross for me to be saying that I know him. When we was in a garden, I was about it, but now we're a little bit too close to the cross. Go, go, government around here, you know what I'm saying? We we got to remember with them soldiers. You know? uh, we had a courthouse now, though. Huh? I don't know. You know Jesus? No. Yeshua? No. Yahushua? No. Christ? No. I ain't never even met him. Oh no, boy like that. <laughs> they ain't say this part. I know Barabbas. <laughs> that's not in there. That's not in there. Say that's not in there. <laughs> that, no, that, that's not in there. That ain't even my version. That ain't even in there. But his destitution creates a lesson for disciples. Matthew 17 records the disciples also dealt with unbelief in this matter. So when Matthew talks about this same account, he said, Yeshua says, y'all, he says that the disciples have unbelief too. You thought that you was the only one struggling with your belief. And the ones that were following him closely were struggling. Some of us have just come into it or watch this. We are elementary in our belief. Or we are introductory in our belief. We know that we haven't reached a mature stage. Or we're trying to mature, but we're not at a, we're not at a mature state. We're always maturing. But some of us can admit, like, okay, I'm not. That's his, his admission. Okay, I believe, but I need some help. I'm still developing. I'm still maturing in my faith. And then you get looking at people who walk with them. Day in and day out. Oh, Lord. And they got issues too. 
How is it that these same disciples that in chapter 6 of Mark were able to cast out demons? They were able to cast out demons. You go three chapters ahead of time, you would have thought that I just cast out demons in the last city that I was in. This one ain't going to be no challenge, but you ain't met this challenge before. I believe help because watch this the disciples actually asked the same question in a different manner they go to him privately they go to him privately how did how, how, how come we couldn't do that because three chapters ago three seasons ago oh God I was casting out everything that came my way but this season it seems like I can't get nothing out am I talking to any believers in the house three seasons ago it seems like every time I asked God to do something he was getting it out the way but this season I ran into an issue I never seen before and I can't get it out of my house God help me I can't get it out of my children I can't get it out of my relationships. I can't get it out of my business. Oh, God, I can't get it out. Anybody can be honest and say, Lord, okay, y'all don't need no help. Maybe it's just me. Uh, Lord, help my unbelief. Maybe you got it. Maybe I can come to you and you won't disappoint me. Like this father was disappointed by folks who were not only believers but had demonstrated they had demonstrated the ability to get a prayer through they had demonstrated the ability to perform exorcisms so you went to the exorcist but the exorcist couldn't exercise your problem What if I told you that in that season, three chapters ago, Yeshua had empowered them. When he sent them out two by two, he empowered them for that. <laughs> he had empowered them for that. And see, what happens is sometimes we don't go back for empowerment for this season. God help me. Because I've been in this for so long, I think that I can keep doing the same things that I've been doing. And they're going to work on this problem. Well, new season, new problems, new problems, new anointing. Come on. Say fresh anointing. Fresh anointing. Yes, sir. Say better belief. Better belief. I got a. I did not mean to. Let me. The disciples also dealt with unbelief in this matter. Watch this. Sometimes things are not happening because we keep going to the wrong ones. It's not that they're not believers. It's that they 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 believe need help too. And God is using your issue to develop their belief. God help me. God, why can't I do it? God, why can't they do it? Because they could never do it in the first place. It was always what I was doing. So don't you get wrapped up in your belief. Don't you get so wrapped up in your provision that you forget who your provider is. We say, I know my Redeemer lives. We need to say, I know my provider lives. Mark 6, 12 and 13, if you want to look at it, the text tells us the disciples cast out many demons. Somebody say, many. Many. So if it's many, we can imagine there's at least a few types. And even if it's the same type, it's still many. So say this wasn't one or two. It was many. If you flip there, do you see it in your text? Say this is three chapters ago. If you would allow me for the sake of instruction, this is three seasons ago. I was able seasons ago. You were empowered. Okay, I gotta, I gotta move. I've been. The disciples cast out many demons, anointed many who were sick and healed them. 
for that journey, say for that journey, journey. they'd been empowered. You know, there was a season, there was a season, there was a season, God help me, there was a season where manna used to rain from the sky. But then there was a season when the manna stopped. I wonder how many people were still going outside. Watch this. Some of us still going outside looking for manna to rain from the sky when he's saying, you got to go, okay. You got to go get it. Receive this. Hold on. Before I go there. Here's the thing. Deficit isn't automatically terminal because it's absolutely treatable. Deficit isn't automatically terminal because it's absolutely treatable. Say it's absolutely treatable. treatable. Receive this. Belief is built better by petition. He says, Lord, help my son's issue. Lord, help the disciples issue. Watch this. Lord, help the crowds issue. Y'all forgot that the crowds there too. He said, Lord, help the scribes issue. Do y'all not remember that the scribes are in this same thing? He doesn't ask for anybody else. It's me. It's me. It's me. I'm the problem. And I think a church has an issue with admitting that sometimes I am the problem. Throw me out the ship. I'm the one. I'm the reason why you're encountering these storms. I am the. It's not my son's issue because God didn't want to work through my son. All right. It's not the disciples issue because God didn't want to work. It wasn't the scribes' issue because they were still disputing anyway. It wasn't the crowd's issue because they was just watching anyway. And we'd be worried about what's going on in the crowd when they ain't doing nothing but watching. Lord, help my unbelief. Get this. Confession grants access to change. Confession grants access to change. Help comes at the asking price of honor, honesty, and humility. Can I show it to you? Yes, sir. Honor recognizes his lordship. What does he say? Lord. Honesty realizes our deficit. He says, Lord, help my. Humility requests his provision. Lord, help my unbelief. I'm humble enough to admit I ain't got it all. Come on. Nice breakdown. I believe you. I don't have belief. Some of us could get help right now if we could just admit that, God, I believe you. I just, I don't have belief for this. I don't have it. And it's, oh my God, it's a, I don't have it. There are cities, if you check the earlier part of chapter 6, there are cities that he went through, his own city, where he couldn't work miracles there because of their unbelief. But this is why I say unbelief isn't terminal because it's absolutely treatable. His unbelief wasn't terminal because it was treatable because he was asking for help. People in that city were probably not looking for the help that was right present with them. But he says, Lord, I don't have time to be prideful because I need your provision. Some of us need to be like, God, I don't have time to act like, can I just talk about what I really want to talk about? God, I can't sit up here and be like, I'm a pastor and I know everything and I can't act like sometimes, God, it's me. I am the None of y'all are my children, but sometimes what happens in church is we play a father role. Can I talk about pastors real quick? I know we always preach about the people. Can we preach about pastors? Sometimes we get put into father role. I accept the ones that I'm allowed into. I demand nothing. But what happens is that sometimes when we get in this father position, we get into two because fathers are supposed to be providers. But... I can only provide when given provision and permission. 
I can only, God help my soul, I can only provide when I've been given provision and permission. See, watch this. They had been empowered per that mission. I said they had been empowered for that, per that mission, on that journey. This was a different journey. They were on their walk of faith, and their unbelief caused a trip hazard. They were on their walk of faith, and their... Because some of us haven't stumbled in a few seasons, and then when we start tripping, we're like, what's going on? Did you ask him to empower you for this step? Were you given clearance for this level? You know if you wind up on a level that you don't have clearance for, they will escort you, sometimes not just off the floor, but out of the building. I don't know. I don't know if y'all heard what I just said. <laughs> My next level. Oh God, it's due to me. Says who? Says who? And I'm walking into my newness. Do you have clearance? Nope. Watch this. Let me check your credentials. Oh, you thought you could do this? Oh no, you on the wall on the floor, buddy. You on, you on the wrong floor. Yes, sir. And now when I catch you on the floor you don't belong, now I got to see if you belong in the building. Uh, uh, uh. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. David was only allowed to stay in the king's presence because he had clearance, not from the king. Some of us are trying to operate in rooms we haven't been in clearance for. You might can walk around undercover without covering. But I don't know, I don't know if I'm doing it right today. I said you can walk in there undercovering, wolf. <laughs> Lord, I don't know if I'm doing this right. Said, Lord, help. My unbelief. The issue is mine. The problem is me. Because you really want to use this situation not just to help me, not just to help mine, but to help everybody. Yes. Okay, you missed the kingdom moment right there to celebrate. <laughs> My issue, okay, y'all don't even believe this. I don't know if you sit, if we sit in the right room. Watch this. This one man's issue helped the whole kingdom. This one man's issue. I wish you would celebrate God. I said, this one man's issue. Oh, see, so you're only thinking about the disciples, him and his son. We reading his test. Say issue is helping me. His issue is helping me realize that there's some areas of my belief where I don't even have it. Okay, y'all don't want to. Maybe y'all ain't see because see disciples think that they got it all figured out. And God told them in Matthew, he said, no, you got unbelief too. But we walk with him every day. Day in. Somebody say day in. Help me, Jordan. Say day in. I don't know if y'all going to get with me unless I do it. Say day in. Or day out. Ah. Somebody say day in and day out. I've been walking with them. But if I be honest, I'm still dealing with unbelief. Hold on. He went.
bit off key. That's how we sound. Hold on, you was on key, and then I don't know what that last note was. And you know what God is doing to us? I don't know what that last... (laughs) Truth be told, issues activate our inventory. Issues activate our inventory, what we have, or if anything is missing. When you have, <laughs> when you have issues, God help me, when you have issues, you start making sure that you still have all the stuff you think you had. Anybody, maybe y'all, ain't, maybe y'all don't do this. I start checking like, hold on, wait a minute, I, I got this, okay. I, I've been studying and, and, and I've been praying and, and, and I've been seeking this face and, and I've been, the, what is it that Because my belief should have turned this around by now. And if my belief didn't do it, and the disciples' belief didn't do it, what's the problem? He realized it. He says, it's not the crowd's problem. It ain't the church. It's not the watchers. It's not the onlookers. It's not the scribes. It's not the disciples. It's not my son. It's certainly not God. It's me. I'm the problem. The Lord looked beyond the fault and saw the need. Somebody ought to give him praise right there. The Lord looked beyond the fault and saw the need. He looked beyond the fault and he solved the disorder. He looked beyond the fault and he answered the petition. He looked beyond the fault and enlightened his disciples. I don't think you just caught what I just said. I said he looked beyond the fault and saw the need. See, that's one level. He looked beyond the fault and he answered the petition. Say, that's another level. He looked beyond the fault and solved the disorder. Say, that's another level. And then he looked beyond the fault and enlightened his disciples. One issue just fixed. And it's helping us right now. Say, it's helping me right now. Say, this is helping the whole kingdom. The master teacher used these issues for divine intervention and instructional purposes. The father receives the remedy for his son. The son is relieved of the deaf and dumb convulsion, the deafness and dumbness and convulsions. The disciples receive the regimen for this level of unclean spirit. They had been casting out unclean spirits. They hadn't ran into this level. They had belief for last season. They needed different belief, more belief, better belief for this situation. There's a situation that we're dealing with. I ain't being prophetic. I'm being realistic. I don't need to be deep. Hold on. Let me search out there. Y'all know. Hold on. Let me crank up my discernment. There's an issue that you're dealing with. There's an issue. I, I feel it in the room. There's, a, there's an issue that you're dealing with in your family. I, 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 who am I talking to? Why do we do this stuff? Why do we do this stuff? I, oh, am I in the room? Am I in the room? I, I, there's an issue that's going on in your household, and it's causing things to, to be thrown sometimes into fire to burn it up, and sometimes into water to drown it out, and, and you just want it out of your house. It's, it's not you, but, uh, but, but, but I sense that it's connected to you. Say, we have the word, and the word is enough. (sighs) 
we all deal with issues in faith, in belief, that we haven't been able to get beyond because we thought it was only about our belief. And we left our provider out of our belief. Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. This thing I don't have the belief for. And I need your help. Because truth be told, the only reason I have belief is because you gave it to me in the first place. The only reason I have belief, I'm going to come to you next week with that one. The only reason I have belief is because you gave it to me in the first place. Watch this say, faith is a gift. It's a gift. And I have to, here's the thing about the gift. Most times, thank you, Holy Ghost. Y'all excuse me. I say, most times what happens is when we receive the gift, even if we work the gift, we forget about the giver. Come on now. When somebody gives you something and you receive it, it becomes yours. You do with it as you please. This doesn't work like that. Watch this. You must use as directed. When they give you a prescription, what do they tell you? You. I'm giving you a prescription. Use as directed. Christ took the dispute and the deficit and turned it into deliverance and development. Adonai has an amazing and extraordinary and impeccable reach with this one issue He was able to reach the father. With the same reach, he was able to reach the son. With the same reach, he was able to reach the disciples. With the same reach, he's able to reach the whole kingdom. Say the same reach. I don't know the level of belief that the child had, but he reached him. I know that the father had a level of belief, but not enough for this issue. Say he reached them. I would venture to say that the disciples had a different level of belief because not only what they had seen him do, but what he had allowed them to do. Say he reached them. Say the word is going to reach me today. I want to leave you with your message entitlement for this morning and this moment from deficit to deliverance from deficit to deliverance the Lord used this deficit not only to bring deliverance but also to bring development I'm going to deliver what you need delivered because I'm here say he's here here. to deliver deliver. here's the thing he's also here to develop I don't want to just deliver you into belief I want to develop you in belief Lord I believe Do I have anybody in the house that could be honest enough that you're dealing with something? I ain't got to be deep. I already know it. You may not want to admit it, but at least I I tell you what, confession grants access to change. It's me. I'm the issue. You've been trying to work through me this whole time. You've been trying to get my attention this whole time. I took it to the pastor, and the pastor couldn't make it work. I took it to the prophet, and the prophet couldn't make it work. I took it to, I took it to so many people. What did the woman, thank you, Holy Ghost, what did the woman with the issue of blood do? I took it to doctor after doctor after doctor after doctor, and they couldn't solve my issue. But if I could just touch... You ever read that story and you went down the next few chapters and all of a sudden people start touching on his garment because if she can get it. 
if she can get it, I can get it too. Watch this. If he can get deliverance, I can get it too. The text doesn't even tell us whether his belief was further developed, but God still brought deliverance. I said the text, y'all need to celebrate God right now. The text doesn't even tell us whether his belief was further, was, was further developed. But here's what we do know. The disciples was. Say, it's helping me. I didn't even know I had an issue. Some of us didn't, wasn't even ready to admit that we had an issue because we want to be so strong in our faith. And we protect the projection of our faith, not the place of it. And so some of us project this faith that's infallible, that is flawless. I have a flawless faith. That's the front that some of us put on. I believe God and things just happen. Okay. I'm here to tell you, you're going to run into an issue where your belief is going to be challenged. And the only way your issue will be solved if you have enough honor, if you have enough honesty, and if you have enough humility to say, Lord, help my unbelief. Lord, I believe. Somebody say, Lord, Lord I, believe. I believe. Help my unbelief. He's about to deliver the things connected to you. I said he, now we're speaking prophetic. I said he's about to deliver things that are connected to you. Do you believe this? He's going to live, deliver them by developing you. Because he developed his disciples and his disciples are helping to develop us. Because a disciple's disciple wrote this gospel. One more time. I said a disciple's disciple wrote this gospel this is the gospel of Mark and he's a disciple of Peter and as far as time goes this is the first gospel historically this is the first gospel I know you read Matthew Mark historically in my own point this is the first gospel. A disciple's disciple wrote the first gospel. I said one man's issue, the whole kingdom. Give God praise right there.